The first topic we cover is a discussion of variogram models. And we start with looking at some terminology. As we already discussed previously, there are specific terms used in the geostatistical literature that pertain to different aspects of the variogram or the semi-variogram. First of all, there's a notion of the SIL, which is kind of a strange term if you're not familiar with it, but it's really a measure of the process variance. So the total variance of the process is called the SIL. The range, as we discussed previously, is the distance beyond which there is no more spatial autocorrelation. So it's the point at which the variogram flattens out. And then the nugget is um, a very peculiar concept. It's uh, something that really shouldn't exist. It's a positive variance at distance zero. At, theoretically, at distance zero, there should be no uh, variance at all. But because of all kinds of issues that we'll talk about in a second, there is the possibility of having a value for the variance at distance zero, and that is then called the nugget. So um, idealized a variogram can be thought of as looking like this where it reaches a distance of about 7, where the uh, curve flattens out. So at that point, the, all the variance is the total variance of the process, and that's called the SIL. Before that, the variance of the process is actually lowered by the covariance that changes with distance. And remember, in the variogram analysis, it's all about dissimilarity. So the closer two points are, the smaller the dissimilarity. Hence, the curve increases from theoretically the origin point to the top. Then let's consider these concepts in turn from a little more technical point of view. So let's start with the SIL. The SIL is really about limiting behavior as the distance of separation, h in our terminology, uh, goes to the limit. So if we uh, recall the expression for the semivariogram that we ended with in the last set of lectures is that the semivariogram at any distance h is the difference between the total variance of the process c0 minus the covariance associated with distance h. And as h increases, as the distance of separation increases, as we've seen because of distance decay, the covariance decreases as well, so in the limit uh, it goes to zero. And then what's left, if ch is zero, is that the semivariance is the semivariogram equals c0, which is the variance of the process. And in our terminology, we're going to call that the SIL. So the SIL is nothing but the total variance of the process. As two points get closer together, that variance is actually decreased by their covariance, and the difference between the total variance of the process and this covariance is the actual semi-variogram. So mathematically, you can find the SIL from this simple equation by just setting CH to zero, then it follows that the semi-variogram equals the variance of the process. The second important concept is the range, and the range is the distance where the sill is reached. And so the range is that h for which the semi-variogram gamma h equals the variance of the process c0. Visually, it's the point where the variogram flattens out. There's a very important implication of the knowledge of the range, which we discussed earlier, uh, for sa spatial sampling. Namely, since the range implies that points that are further apart than this range are not spatially correlated, then if we want to create a sample with observations that are not spatially correlated, we have to make sure that they are separated by at least this range. And then finally, there's a common concept of the nugget, which, as I already mentioned, is something that really shouldn't exist. But empirically, we find that the semi-variogram at distance zero has a positive value. By definition, that's not possible. At zero, it's in the origin, so it should be zero. Uh, 
So how can this happen? This is purely an empirical uh, artifact, so to speak. We can measure variation at a very small scale, and specifically at a scale below which we have measurement. Since the empirical variogram is based on the uh, covariation or the square differences between locations that are a given distance apart, we don't have any measurement for interaction at a, at a scale that is smaller than the smallest distance of separation, so than the smallest nearest neighbor distance. So we ha since we have no information on the variability, there is some measurement error, and that measurement error is absorbed in the nugget. Then there's a third concept related to this, which is the partial cell, and this is important to know because some software requires you to guess initial values for the sill, but other software wants you to guess initial values for the partial sill. And this partial sill is basically the difference between the sill, the total variance of the process, and the nugget. This leads, this leads us to the specification of so-called valid variogram models. So valid models are models that uh, respect statistical properties of uh, variances and covariances. And as we know, um, a variance has to be positive. And by extension, in a multivariate world, a variance-covariance matrix has to be positive definite. So what's the counterpart of that for variogram models, since they really are models of variation and covariation of the process, is that the covariation, the uh, covariogram, must be positive definite for each distance. And the counterpart of that, because really the covariogram and the semivariogram are two ways of looking at the same process, but from different perspectives, the uh, semi-variogram has to be negative definite over all distance ranges. So how do we make sure that this happens? We make sure it happens through first restricting the kinds of parametric models that we can consider, and we'll see several examples in a few minutes. And secondly, not only restriction the f of the restricting the functional form, but also limiting the parameter space. So certain parameters, for example, cannot be negative, and, and so on. Then a final aspect related to this is whether or not the process is isotropic. As we already saw, when computing an empirical variogram, one consideration is whether the same variogram holds in all directions. When this holds, the process is called isotropic. In other words, the only thing, the only variable that matters is the distance of separation. The process is the same in all directions. When there are directional effects, we call the process non-isotropic or n-isotropic, and that means that we really need to have different variograms for direction, as we've seen in our application of empirical variograms, but it also means that we might need a different model in each direction. So it just complicates everything. Instead of having one model that works for all directions, we now might have a separate model, say, for each of the four quadrants, as we've seen before. So then, what are these variogram models? There are very many of them. The most common ones are the spherical, the exponential, the Gaussian, the wave model, and then a whole family of models due to Matern. They're very flexible. They allow uh, different shapes depending on their parameters. And this table in Banerjee et al. summarizes the functional forms. And you see all of these are functions, obviously, of distance, and they include um, variances, covariances, and nuggets. And the variances are basically the same as the sill. And we see this uh, in ever more complicated functional forms. Just to give this a more concrete meaning, here are a couple of uh, theoretical variograms that we can plot uh, 
in GSTAT. On the upper left side is the spherical variogram, which is kind of our workhorse because it's so easy to interpret in terms of the range and the sill and the nugget. Then the one on the right, in the upper, right upper quadrant, is the exponential variogram. That's a little more difficult to have intuition for because it really pertains to asymptotic considerations because the exponential variogram just keeps going. It doesn't flatten out in the same sense as the spherical one does. Then we have an example of the Gaussian variogram. There's a, a little kink in the beginning of the curve. It makes it more of an S shape, but it does also flatten out very nicely. And then the wave variogram is even more complicated in that it first goes up, then goes down, and then goes back up. So what this suggests is something other than the standard uh, second law of first law of geography by Tobler's, which, which implies distance decay. The wave model actually implies first distance decay, then the opposite of distance decay, and then back distance decay. So it's important to keep in mind what these models imply for the kind of processes that we're analyzing. And just to give you a sense of how flexible the Matern uh, specification is for different parameters, the smoothness parameters, you can see this goes from very s steep to ever more sloping forward and even taking the, uh, more of an S shape. The two models that we will focus on here, because we this is not a whole course, this is just two lectures devoted to the geostatistical perspective, are the spherical and the exponential variogram. And let's take a closer look first at the spherical variogram. So by in, in many ways this is um, the easiest one to work with because it's very intuitive. It's intuitive in the sense that you see the parameters right there in the model. In some of the other models the parameters are actually, uh, I mean the parameters are there but the concepts that they correspond with are not that straightforward. So in the um, spherical variogram there are actually two models. One uh, pertains to the sloping that happens between the origin and the point where the range is met. The range in this uh, specification is A. So we see this at the top. The first equation is for everything that happens between 0 and the actual range. And that's a function of the uh, C0, which is the nugget, Cs, which is the partial cell. And then a, which is the range. And then beyond the range, for h larger than a, uh, we have the variance of the process, which is the sum of the nugget and the partial sill. So this is the distinction that I wanted to make earlier between the notion of a sill and the notion of the partial sill. The sill is the total variance of the process, but because of the presence of a nugget effect, it you can actually uh, separate it out into the nugget effect C0 and then the rest, so to speak, which will change with distance, that Cs. So then uh, it doesn't change with distance, but that's the difference between the nugget and the total uh, variance. So the total variance of the process, the sill, is the nugget plus the partial sill, Cs. The range is A, and the model is actually two models, one that changes with distance before the range is reached, as we see here in this illustration, and then beyond the range, it's actually a constant, and a constant is equal to the sill. Then the second mainstay of our modeling, to keep things a little more intuitive, is an exponential variogram, which is really an asymptotic notion, because the the curve keeps going, so it doesn't actually flatten out. So there isn't a uh, equivalent notion of the range, but there is a notion of the practical range, and the practical range is 95% of the asymptotic range. The equation, again, uh, this time not two equations, because it doesn't become a constant at any point. 
but it has a negative exponential slope. Three parameters again, the nugget, C0, the partial sill, Cs, and the range is A. So between these three parameters, we specify a curve, which looks like this. And instead of having a notion of an actual constant beyond a given distance, we actually don't have that. But for all practical purposes, it doesn't change very much beyond the practical range, which is 95% of the asymptotic rates. So in terms of the variogram models, um, the important concepts are the, uh, the variance of the process, which consists, which is also called the sill, and the sill is uh, made up of two parts, a nugget effect, which is kind of an artifact and has to do with measurement error or micro scale variation, and it gives the variance at distance zero, and then the partial sill is basically the difference between the total process variance and the nugget. Then the second important concept is that of the range beyond which uh, the co-variation uh, does no longer changes with distance. So beyond the range, the total variance of the process is constant, and that is called the sill. In terms of theoretical models, we saw that they have to uh, conform to certain parametric specifications with restrictions on the parameter space. The two that we'll be using most often are the spherical variogram and the exponential variogram.